So I think we're ready. Let's try and um, we're just going to finish off this circle geometry question from um, last lesson because we ran out of time. We did one and two, and we're going to do three. Okay. So um, I need some help just to get my own brain back into the space. So. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some constructions onto here uh, because to prove that PR is parallel to QS, I had to do some stuff with cyclic quads. Do you remember that? Cyclic quadrilaterals. I had to use the opposite angles and the uh, exterior angles. So here are the constructions I'm going to make. I'm going to have AB down here, which creates two cyclic quads, one over here, uh, ABRP, and one over here, AB. SQ, so two cyclic quads. Um, while I'm at it, I'm also going to construct XP because I'm going to have to use that in a minute. I might as well use the same color because apparently I end up proving that these are the same, um, the same length that is. So there we go. That's a bit wavy, but you get the idea. Okay. So if I recall, what we did was we said, let's give APR, that angle over there, let's give it a name. Let's call it theta. And if you have a look at the cyclic quad in this circle over here, um, circle ABRP, you've got this opposite angle, uh, ABR. It's opposite theta. So because they are opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, they are, do you remember? What's the relationship between them? Supplementary. They're supplementary, very good. So I'm just going to label that 180 degrees minus theta. But then you can say, hey, wait, this angle over here is the exterior angle of a cyclic quad on this side. So the cyclic quad ABSQ has this as the exterior angle. And the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral equals what? Yeah, the opposite interior angle, which in this case, here's an interior angle, here's the opposite interior angle. So there's my 180 degrees minus theta. They're the same. And now I've got, between the lines that I was meant to compare, I've got co-interior angles. And lo and behold, they're supplementary. That means they're parallel. Okay, So I'm going to put these guys in, like so. OK, wonderful. Now, where we went from there for part two, again, to do it a little bit quicker, just so that we can get onto the last part, um, I think it was AP equals BX. That's what's given. Is that right, Russell, on the question paper? AP equals BX? Yep. So we get told that this side and this side are the same. And I use those as the basis of a um, congruent triangles proof. Okay. So if you have a look at, I'm even going to draw it this time. I was in a hurry, so I didn't do it. Maybe on the side here, you want to draw for me triangle APX. Can you do that one? APX. It looks something like this. A, P, X, like so. Um, and then overlapping with it, I have A, X, B. So it looks like this. It's going downwards. Like so. So I'm going to put on those equal uh, sides that I just mentioned, this guy and this guy. I also have the fact that AX is in both triangles, here and here. So that's why I saw, oh, I've got two sides, two sides. The sides I'm interested in, the red ones, are these guys over here. I'm just going to put a question mark on those. Those are the ones I want to prove are equal. So the congruence proof I wanted, color change, relied on these angles being equal. Because if I have those angles, what's my, um, what's my congruence test? Yeah, good. Side, angle, side, it's included, everything is fine. So the way I did that was I had to be a bit sneaky with these angles. This angle here, PAX, PAX, it's made up of two different angles. Okay. So here's one of them. I'm going to call this one alpha. Do you remember it was um, standing on the same arc as this angle over here? Can you see it? They're both alpha. Okay. And by similar logic, because AP is an equal chord to BX, the angles standing on those chords are also equal. So here is the angle formed by chord AP. And where is it? I've even lost it. Here it is. Here is the angle formed by chord BX. So they're equal. So now I've got these guys being both um, alpha plus beta. OK, so ta-da, I got my congruence proof. And at last, I can say AB equals XP. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, reason, corresponding sides in congruent triangles. All 
Okay, so this brings us up to speed. I hope you've gotten a bit more of a sense of the question now. So let's do the last part. It has to do with AR. AR. We want this to be a diameter of, or we want to find, we want to prove that it's a diameter of that circle. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that makes this challenging is we don't often prove something like that. We prove that things are equal all the time. We're very, very good at it. How do you even go about proving that something is a diameter? Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Over off on the right here, I'm just going to draw a little circle. Now, if you have the diameter of a circle, we don't know all that many properties that relate specifically to diameters. So I want you guys to rack your brains a little bit and think, what properties could be advantageous to me that relate to a diameter in a circle? Any thoughts? Yeah, Russell. Oh, very good. So admittedly, I did mention there aren't that many to choose from. Um, a diameter, of course, divides a circle into two halves, so semicircles, right? And we know that the way that we say the property is, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. It's 90 degrees, OK? Now, if you come over to our circle, AR is here. So if it is a diameter, which angles are the angles in a semicircle? There's actually more than one. Have a look. APR is one of them. Okay. And um, the other one is ABR. Both of them, if, I'm, if we're right, um, should be equal to 90 degrees. Okay. So how do we go about proving this? Look back at the question. How many of you guys have the question paper with you? It's okay, don't worry about it. I'm just going to pinch Russell's. Let me give you a clue, and I need to give you some time, maybe a minute, to have a think about this before I just show you the answer. The, the question, it starts off with, it doesn't just say go and prove it. It actually gives you a bit of extra information, which we haven't put on the diagram yet. It says, AR is a tangent. In fact, I think last time I drew it green, I just forgot this time. AR over here is a tangent to this circle, <clears throat> and AS over here is a tangent to that circle. Okay. That's the only extra clue we get, that these guys are tangents. So just like you had a, a brainstorm for a minute and thought, ooh, I'm meant to get to a diameter, so maybe this is a property that could be useful to me. Now you know there are tangents. Brainstorm and think about the properties you know related to tangents. You may even want to go back into your book and say, well, what kinds of things can I conclude if I have tangents? Take a minute to think about it, maybe draw some things on, and see if anything pops out to you. Can I give you a moment to have a go on your own?